The Negro Leagues were created for black baseball players who wanted to play ball at the highest level of sport. However, segregation laws did not allow them to play in the major leagues. Now, though, Negro League baseball players are being recognized by the MLB. That means local Negro League players will now hold historical MLB records, players like Mobile native Satchel Page. NBC 15's Kiris Harmon joins us now. Kiris, this is big news with Mobile's rich baseball history. Yeah, it is, Kim. And because of the added data for more than 2,000 players in the Negro Leagues, Satchel Page of Mobile is now the third best of all time for single season pitching. Some say the addition the of Negro, Negro League players were created long um, for a time when the code of the day was separation, segregation. The Negro Leagues were created in 1920 during Jim Crow's heyday. They differ from the MLB in that the players who were equally as talented were locked out of that dream to pursue baseball in America on the highest levels. For the last couple of years, researchers at the University of South Alabama have been working on an oral history project called Down the Bay, recording memories from the Down the Bay neighborhood. They found Mobile's black baseball history runs deep. Mobile has five Hall of Famers, um, base, five Hall of Fame baseball players, and three of them came from down the bay. So Hank Aaron was born down the bay, Satchel Paige, and Willie McCovey. Mobile also had a semi-pro team in the Negro Leagues. We had the Mobile Black Bears. A team that Hank Aaron and Satchel Paige played for. Now after a century, the tides are turning in baseball. The MLB combining statistics from the Negro Leagues to the MLB record. It's controversial, um, but it's also a part of history. Josh Gibson is now the career leader in batting average, slugging percentage, and OPS. Satchel Page is ranked third place all time for single season pitching. Really, it's surprising that it's taken so long, but um, like Satchel Page was born in 1906, and the world he lived in was so different than the world we live in today, but he's indisputably one of the greatest baseball players of all time. So for him not to get that recognition just because of the color of his skin is ridiculous. Anthony Williams is the interim director at the Negro Southern League Museum in Birmingham, Alabama. He says you can't tell the story of Major League Baseball in America without including the Negro Leagues. When you see black players start in 1947 with Jackie Robinson, there's a reason. You know, it's it's not if you if you don't include them in the record, then you know the players just come out of nowhere. So where do these players start to come from who just came in the league? so amazing and you know excelling at the highest level of the sport they didn't just pop out of nowhere he says the addition of the negro league stats are long overdue i think the fact that there had to be separate leagues in the first place is kind of the issue and i think the fact that we are overcoming that now is important and it's important for kids and people of all ages to look back and see where we've come from Williams telling me now more people are curious and eager to learn about the Negro Leagues. We've already seen people come in just based on the news, um, wanting to know more about the Negro Leagues, wanting to actually find out more about the history that's being put out on a national level and to just see um, the stories and the experiences of those players. Williams says players in the Negro Leagues are finally getting the recognition they deserve. If you're interested in learning more information from the Down the Bay Report, just look for this story on our website. We've included a link to the research. Kim?